Welcome back. So Apple has just released macOS 26.2. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you all the new features and changes that are here with this new software update. We begin with a minor improvement that's here. As long as you don't have an app in full screen mode and it's in windowed mode or it's minimized. So you can see my Safari is not in full screen mode. It's windowed. And if I press my brightness indicator, you can see that the brightness bar shows up just below the control action. And the same is true when it comes to volume. As long as I don't have Safari or any of these other apps in full screen mode or if they are minimized, that's where this action shows up. It pops up right there. And that's the old default that we were used to. But the moment you put it in full screen mode, just like this, and you press your brightness indicator like this, or the buttons on my keyboard, those are the ones that I'm using to trigger this action. You can see that instead of being in the top right corner under the control center, Apple has relocated them to this middle center portion. So it works for the brightness and it also works for the speakers. You can see now it's like dead center in your screen. It's a pretty good welcome change. And then if, if you're app is still in full screen mode just like this and you expose the top menu bar it's no longer going to be dead center or in the top middle of your screen you can see as long as the top uh, menu bar is showing it goes back to its default and also the volume one does the same thing and then as long as i bring my cursor down here and the top menu bar disappears then it comes back to the center position i'm not sure who asked for this change but hey it's a nice little tweak for the next new feature there is something called edge light which apple has just added and i'm going to be demonstrating to you using facetime so i do have facetime open right here and if you do hear some noises it's because i'm here with the little guy hello baby hello so he's trying to learn how to grab stuff so this is his like favorite grabbing toy you can grab it grab it no not yet grab it grab it yay well done okay so if you do hear some sounds because yeah we are demoing together the new features and changes so back to edge light so with edge light check this out um if you go in order for you to activate edge light you have to go to the video option right there and when you click on it you can see there is this new option that's there that's called edge light and if you turn it on or if you just click on it like this you can see it adds this ring around your video and um, it's meant to mimic the look of like a physical ring and it uses neural engine to actually position the light and when you click on the arrow right here you can see it gives you options to be able to change the uh, thickness so you can see this is like as slim as it gets and then if i go this way this is pretty thick i think in between is a fair good option and it also gives you like really warm light or if you want cold light more to the white light this is what it looks now you can pretty much see how it looks with the edge light on um if i was to if you wanted the maximum brightness you would obviously try and get the hey it's okay it's okay i'm almost done okay if you wanted to get the best look or the best most effective brightness then you would have to obviously get the thicker borders just like this and but you know for aesthetic reason i think in between option like this is good and then one thing that i like about edge light is that it doesn't really obstruct everything that you have on the screen so you can see as i move my cursor around it's pretty much like uh, becoming invisible so my dock i can see the apps and the moment i move my cursor in the middle then it, it the the ring or the edge light itself shows up again and you can see how smooth this transition is it's so good and this is how it pretty much my video looks with the edge light on and then if i was to go and switch it off this is how it looks maybe let me do a test with the lights off and then switch on edge light and then show you how it looks this is how it looks and now if i go to the edge light and try and turn as much of it on as possible um, maybe i also have to turn up the brightness on the laptop just like this you can see how the edge light looks then if i was to turn off edge light this is how it looks with the edge light off and if i go back and turn off edge light you can see how it looks i think it does make a slight difference when it comes to video conferencing but then no one is going to be doing a video call in pitch black just like this 
but you can see that this feature will come in clutch and practical for users that do video conferencing and if you're wondering which devices edge light is supported on it's supported on all apple silicon max so if you have an m1 chip or newer you pretty much have this new feature another change that's here if you use sleep focus you probably notice this when you turn on your sleep focus so right now it's on and you can see the color of the sleep focus is actually purple before it used to be green and when you put your iphone or your ipad or your other apple device i think the apple watch does that too into sleep focus it used to be purple while the mac used to be green so now they've made it more uniform across the system and now when you put your device into sleep focus you can see that the bed color is going to be purple another change that this update introduces which is not certainly going to be appreciated by everyone is thunderbolt 5 mac cluster support so if you have a ton of these this is a thunderbolt 5 cable you can see it does have the 5 writer to tell you that and you have an m4 pro mac mini m4 pro mac studio or m4 pro or m4 pro max macbook pro and you want to create your own um, super ai computer you now have the ability to do that because you can now run huge models on your mac thanks to the new cluster support that's here so you can connect up to four macs together via thunderbolt 5 cables and now the unified memory sort of adds up and warm mac cluster support isn't something that's new that this update brings it adds the ability to use thunderbolt 5 speed so instead of being limited to 10 gigabits per second with this new thunderbolt 5 mac cluster support you now have the ability to be able to tap into 80 gigabits per second to be able to run your super ai computers and run the biggest models out there so this is not something that everyone is going to use but it's one that developers and i think researchers are going to be able to play with. something else that's new which is also on the latest ios 26.2 is if you go into your settings and you go to the general tab under airdrop and handoff you can see now there's known airdrop contacts option and this says that you will automatically appear for 30 days to people you have shared a one-time code with and if you click on the manage tab right here it opens the contacts which i don't want to do because i have to do a ton of blurring but now you have the ability to share like a airdrop code to your contact and now instead of you having to go in and change this to everyone you can just leave it as is to contacts only and as long as they have that airdrop uh, known contacts code for a period of 30 days it's going to be valid and they can be able to send files or transfer things to you as needed when it comes to the reminders app there's a new change that also is available on the latest ios and ipad os 26.2 they actually work together it's not just exclusive to mac and you need both to be able to achieve this so reminders has the ability to now allow you to set a, an alarm to go with a specific reminder so you can see right here i have the ability to be able to change this time if i click on this reminder i can choose preset times and what this is going to do is it's actually going to set an alarm in accordance to this reminder so if it's a grocery that i need to do a run for or go and fetch something it's gonna send an alarm and that's going to go with this reminder but then the mac is not the one that's going to be the one to give you the alarm or ring it's going to be able to give you that alarm through your iphone that's paired with your apple id that is on the same apple id that your mac is on so essentially it's using the alarm kit and it's thanks to continuity that it's able to send this same alarm to your iphone and ipad to be able to send you an alarm that goes with your reminder now another app that received a minor change is the news app so when you open it up for the first time you're going to see a new splash screen and it opened up on my other device i just had to pull it over here and now you can see here if i just click on the search tab you can see on this sidebar we used to have just under news plus the sports section the puzzles politics business and food all used to be listed under just the news app but now apple has sort of consolidated them right here when you click on search it's the thing that pops up right here and then if you click on search right there it's going to show you your recent history but since apple has relocated those um, categories or tabs you can see these sections 
is also now here as well so they essentially just brought it down to the bottom and now they've added it to the search as well as an option but it doesn't prevent you from searching what you want to so if you go to sports and you select it there it's essentially the same as coming to this uh sections and then selecting sport or the other subsections that you see right here and you can see for most other sections there's actually going to be pop-up screens like for example in the sports there's more coverage that shows up i think one that i saw was uh was it business or food where there was a pop-up screen maybe i might have cleared it but it's a cool new change that's here but if you were used to having the same icons in the previous location that might be a little bit confusing and uh, yeah shout out to the white caps they played good but they lost this update also brings a minor change to the podcast app so the first time you open the podcast app you're going to see a pop-up screen it's going to talk about chapters podcast mentions and from this episode and if we were to open like a random podcast for example you can see the waveform podcast right here if you were to be able to go into like a specific podcast if i click on it like this you can see how the player looks certain podcasts it's actually going to show chapters and then if we minimize this you can see that the links are actually now clickable so they will actually take you to the specific page that you are looking and if it's a mentioned or tagged podcast within um, another podcaster that's on apple podcast you can be able to pretty much just go from the link to that mentioned podcast right away without having to manually go into the section that you're looking for or to search for the specific podcast with the previous mac os 26.1 apple had updated the apple tv app but then when you'd open the apple tv app itself and go into like the navigation tabs or look into the side tab right here this section still had the apple tv plus but now you can see apple has also renamed it to just apple tv and the same is also true when you try to subscribe or sign up for apple tv TV. it's now just apple tv subscription not apple tv plus and if you were to go into the settings and look for apple tv wherever it used to say apple tv plus that has now been changed to just refer to apple tv so the change has now taken effect both on the front end and the back end as well when you open up the games app for the first time you're actually going to be welcomed by a new splash screen but if you go into the library tab and click on this option you can see you now can sort or filter by different categories which is new and this is an addition to the design for on this mac apple arcade and friends playing which were existing options when you open up apple's infinite whiteboard app the freeform app you can see it's going to open with a new pop-up screen i'll just center the app and here it tells you that you can organize your content and now you have the ability for rows and columns you can add attachments flexible layouts and style your table so the tables portion is something that's new and i believe now when you click done or when you close the pop-up screen now you can see it tells you do more with tables organize content layout section of your board and more and if i click on it just like this you can see it adds the table and we have the ability to resize it accordingly so this is just like a quarter or four different shapes you can customize this according to your need or to the design that you are brainstorming unfortunately safari compact tabs hasn't been introduced with this update it's something that a lot of mac users have been pushing so apple if you're watching we need the option to be able to go into our safari and enable or disable compact tabs like how it used to be with the previous mac os versions so that's pretty much most of the changes that are here when it comes to Mac OS 26.2. Something you do need to keep an eye out for is the Apple security releases. So with this, with each update, just like they previously did with Mac OS 26.1, they released a bunch of security patches. There were actually a ton. So with this update, I assume they are going to also be releasing uh, other security patches as well. So keep an eye out for this. And that's pretty much most of the new features and changes that are here when it comes to Mac OS 26.2. Let me know what you think about this video. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in my other video, which is iOS 26.2. Check it out. Peace. Boom. That's it. That wasn't so bad, right? Hmm. Okay.